Hey, what is up everybody? I am here today uh, with my LV-1 Lightfly case from OCD Labs, and today we're gonna install uh, the new uh, Fit Controller mount uh, that they just released, and uh, big shout out to OCD Labs for the hat. Uh, I am not a hat person, but I'm gonna try becoming a hat person, uh, thanks to now I have this hat. So um, that's the thing. So uh, I'm gonna show you today what uh, a previous video I've got um, shows how to do this uh, with the LV-1 light fly case from OCD Labs and the Fit Controller. If you don't wanna spend the extra $89 or whatever it is uh, on the mount, um, but I am probably going to, at the end of this, suggest strongly that you get the mount if you have the Fit Controller for LV-1. So let's take a look. So I have another video uh, that I've linked in the description about how uh, I put the fit controller uh, into my Lightfly case uh, without the new adapter and foam and all that stuff. So here's the new adapter, here's the foam, but for right now, this is what I've had to deal with. So I've got the foam that goes between the two screens normally. Uh, I did used to have uh, the second screen down at the bottom, um, but I have to take this out flip it over, this is very hard to do with one hand, take my nice little microfiber out of here, grab the fit, put the fit on the thing, and then plug the fit in, and then it just kind of sits in here. Uh, what this new adapter solves is it actually removes this center bracket arm, which is actually keeping the fit too high, uh, and allows it to sit low enough, uh, mount with the rack rails, and allow the screen to close. So let's take a look at that. So the way that this new adapter works um, is it actually replaces altogether this bottom bar uh, for the original like single monitor mount. Um, so these uh, screws will come out um, and then go into this one. So I think um, you don't have to take all your equipment out. I think you just pop this out and it just goes. Uh, but I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to clean some of this stuff up because I need to do some cable management on the inside here. Uh, so let's take a look at that. All right, so step one is we remove these guys. Uh, this is a T25 uh, Torx bit. I found that to work the best. So we'll pop these out. Those were quite strongly in there, so I'm glad I grabbed a power tool and not just a screwdriver. That'd have taken a while. So once those come out, this just comes right out like that. I'm gonna go cut this guy off. All right, I'm just gonna do some cable management inside of here. Don't worry about it. Uh, most people <coughs> have a clean rack already. So in my original video, um, I thought to myself, I might leave all the cabling for um, the second monitor. I'm actually gonna abandon that. Um, the way I'm gonna do it later is I'm gonna actually attach um, some jacks to the back to connect USB and monitor signal uh, for that. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna remove the excess cabling that I didn't need. I highly suggest if you haven't already found uh, these Velcro zip ties, I find them to be amazing. A uh, pack of like 50 of them costs like five to $8 at Lowe's. Um, I buy them every chance I get. They are fantastic. All right, I have now done uh, some cable management stuff. Uh, I've got other videos that explain what I've got going on here with the DigiGrid D and my PC. Um, I did it way different than they originally intended. Um, but with that, I've got um, the cable loom for the DigiGrid D just nicely tucked here, power supply for the fit and the PC, PC fit here, um, some cables and I can move these around if I need to a little bit, uh, but that should all fit nice and low underneath that bar that we're gonna put in. So now let's work on putting in that bar. So you will reuse uh, the screws that came with the um, original case uh, to go in here. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting those 
to line up. Uh, the front will uh, rest on here, but the back will not. It comes just short of that in order for the fit uh, to rock just a little bit to fit in the case better. So that's one screw. I'm just lining them up before I tighten them down. It is a snug fit. All right, and then we tighten it in. All right, now we test fit the fit. Looks like that's going to work correctly. Uh, the next thing is we will replace uh, the side with the um, the bracket, uh, the rack mount bracket adapter that came with the fit originally. So I've got those right here. Um, so I didn't have a need for these originally, but I kept them like a smart person. Uh, and then these will go on here. So let's work on that. So the new mount bracket um, shipped with some screws uh, that we'll use uh, to mount the rack rail in there. Uh, but the original LV-1 came with an Allen wrench uh, for mounting these. So what happens is we take these side Allens out uh, and then put this on. So let's do that now. Okay, so once that last screw comes out, uh, this comes off and the rack rail will go on like so. I need three hands. I find using gravity to your advantage. Smart. All right, so I've got this first side on and the second side goes on exactly the same, so I'm not gonna show you that. All right, now that we've got the rack rail on the fit controller, let's just slide that right on in. Line up the screw holes. All right, so uh, in a normal world with two monitors, uh, there's plenty of room for these cables to come up here. And I am short coming up on getting this hole to line up. And it is because of this cabling right here. Uh, so I'm gonna try to figure that out now. This is why I make tutorial videos whilst I'm doing something, because I want to actually show you the process that my brain goes through on trying to get this stuff to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this bar back out and reroute these cables from the right side, um, just like this USB cable is right now. Try that out. Okay, so I rerouted these cables over to the side uh, from the bottom here uh, to avoid that pinch point. Um, and then I'm going to cable tie these together Put these screws in and we should be off to the races. Okay, so it turns out uh, I was among the first to get the rail shipped to me from OCD and uh, they found out that the fit controller that they got sent to them as a demo was actually different than the one that was commercially released. Uh, and the, the main difference is that the back end of it was a little bit higher, uh, which made it not fit in the case as we just saw. So uh, since then, they have shipped me a little shim. Uh, it's wood block with holes in it. You could probably make one of these if you wanted to. Uh, that's going to go underneath that uh, top monitor mount. So let's install that now and see if it works. All right, so I really don't want to take the monitor off. So I'm going to try to get this out without it. So I figured out if I lower the screen and get these back to out a little easier here. For this other one, I'm going to take it out from the other side. All right, so I'm taking out this back, this last screw, which is the front one, but uh, be extremely careful because it's already super loose by now. So just be very, very careful. All right, so final screws out and the whole thing is loose. Then we take our shim and put it underneath there. And then you'll note that there are also new screws that ship with it uh, that are longer because the other ones were exactly the same length. Uh, the grommets on mine, or the spacer washer things on mine stayed uh, in place. So I'm gonna 
take those off the new screws. Slide this under here. And begin the fun process of trying to get these screws lined up with everything. Uh, both sides of this are threaded, so you'll have to use your tool to get it all the way in there. Alright, so on the back side here, I'm going to put the screws in. Again, they're gonna using the existing washers because they're already in there. This first part's threaded, and then I've got to get it to. Uh... There you go. That's more exciting. So on the back side here, we're just screwing these last parts in. Uh, looks like it's working right through the uh, shim here pretty well. I'll start grabbing the main case here in a second, I am sure. There it is, probably. I had it perfectly lined up, I suppose. And not quite all the way tight here, but uh, pop this out, get the other one in there. And once they're all threaded in, then I will tighten them down. And just make sure they're all fully tightened down. And there we go, the shim is now installed so that the monitor can sit flat. Let's see if it does. All right, so here we are with the piece of foam that is to go onto the unit itself. The way this fits is this side goes under where the layer buttons are. Um, so it goes just like this. The knobs um, line up in here. Faders line up in here all the way down. Let's make sure those are all nice and down. All right, let me slide that onto place here, like so. And now let's see if this monitor closes. Nice, it's pretty flat. Uh, let's go see if it fits in the case now. So I've got the case sitting here and uh, I'm curious if raising that quarter inch up is gonna run into this or not. Magic, it's now in the case. So if we close this, and my backpack is not in the way, it sits uh, sits flush. So it's not, I mean, a little bit of that, it's just the hinges, but um, it looks like it's not, um, I wouldn't throw a huge weight on top of this, but uh, it feels pretty good. So I feel fairly confident that this will work so there you have it. That is the OCD Labs uh, answer to the fit controller. Uh, obviously the rack rail part goes in and then the shim for the top monitor mount and then it all fits in the Pelican case. Uh, I bought this earlier in 2020 uh, and it fits. So I'm sure the new ones uh, that they ship, it will also fit with. So if you buy something new, uh, it should just work. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all the normal social media stuff. Uh, I am on Instagram uh, where I post most of my stuff. So check it out.